are glad that your son loves us. He loves us and took pains for us and paid the price for us. That price was so costly on him. But because of the love he has for us, he went to Calvary Cross and paid that awesome, wonderful, loving price so that through it we shall receive the forgiveness of our sins and have eternal life. We give you glory for that plan we had even before we were born. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We read from Exodus talking about God's plan of redeeming the children of Israel from Egypt. God does not renege or break his promises. When he has a plan, he sees it through. But unfortunately, we do not tell him when to bring the plan or when to answer our prayers. Our duty is to pray and God's duty is to answer at the perfect time. We saw in the book of Genesis, if we can go a little back, in Genesis chapter 15, <coughs> verse 14, God told Abraham, so now the other common I will preach it today. Amen. God told Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in the land that is not theirs. Your descendants will be strangers in the land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them for 400 years look at 400 years from when he was telling revealing this to Abraham he's talking of what will happen in the next 4th century that is God for you And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possession. God planned that his own children will be enslaved. <laughs> I don't know what you are passing through. And you'll be wondering, am I still a child of God? God planned that his children will be enslaved. Not for one week. For 400 years. It is up to us as children to begin to understand our father. He is not like our earthly father. Who spoils us every second with biscuits. And at the end of that terrible slavery. He said they will live with great possessions. The fact is that when God comes to check on you and me, will God find you waiting and praying? Because we serve a God that does not break his promises. If he says he will do something, he will do it. And he does it in his time. The Bible says, when the Son of Man comes, Shall he indeed find faith on earth? Luke 18, 8. I'm sure you have prayer points you've been presenting to God. One day he will come. When Jesus came after four days to visit Mary and Martha, they almost missed it. I pray that you will not miss it the day God will come to answer your prayers in the name of Jesus. For they did not quickly realize that resurrection of life was standing right there with them. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though 
He may die, shall live again. John 11, 25. The children of Israel in Egypt, many of them died. They were into many challenges. I don't know the challenge you are passing through and you think it's the end of the earth. Jesus is saying, though you die, you will live again if you trust in him. It took 400 years before God visited the descendants of Abraham in Egypt. He will also visit you in the name of Jesus. He has a promise to bring you to an expected end. We are serving a living God. A God that does not go back in his promises. Therefore, please, do not fear. Even though the earth be moved. I say, even though the earth be moved. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with its swelling. God is your strength. God is your strength. God is your strength. God is your strength. God is our strength. Psalm 46, 2-4. 400 years may be a long time, but in God's sphere, his clock and calendar are completely different from ours. We must understand that. And Peter wants us to understand that in 2 Peter 3, verse 8. 2 Peter 3, verse 8. Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Just don't be ignorant of this one thing. This one thing. Don't be ignorant of it. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. So, 400 years which the children of Israel were expecting a Messiah could have been four days in the, in, in the calendar of God. Let us get this. The person in the world will not get this because they are not privileged to come to the house of God. If that is the case, what is our doing? If that is the case, what is your duty as a child of God? Our duty is to tarry in prayers. So that when God brings answer, he will not find us in Egypt. God has brought answer for many people. But comes and find them in sin. Comes and find them in quarrel. How do we avoid this? How do we avoid this destruction? That's the question we have to answer. How? And Apostle Paul helps us. Apostle Paul helps us. He says, so I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. Hey! He runs straight to the goal with purpose in every step. Every step, there's a purpose. When you wake up in the morning, have a purpose that you go into worship with your father. You go into that relationship. If you are driving, make sure you are not listening to the worldly music. Listen to the worldly, listen to Christian music. At your work, you can be praying. You know what I do in, at work? I simply pray in tongues. Because I cannot stand there and begin to pick prayer topics. Say, Rabba Kari Boko Jiki, Amaya Baba Kaka Rubon, Riba Kaka Rabba Jiki. That's what I do. Apostle Paul continues, I'm not just, I'm not just shadow boxing. Or playing around. You know, shadow boxing is hitting the air. No. He says, like an athlete, I punish my body. I punish my body. 
How do you punish your body? The other day, after work, Holy Spirit said, Chuka, I want you to fast three days without eating, non-stop. And that fasting will end today. That's how you punish your body. If you don't punish this body, this is what Apostle Paul says. Like an athlete, I punish my body. Some Bible edition will say, I pummel my body. Treating it roughly. Training it to do what it should. You don't punish your body, it will not do what it should. If you don't discipline your body, it will not do what it's supposed to do. It will do what you want, what the flesh wants. Like an athlete, I punish my body, treating it roughly, training it to do what it should, not what it wants. Don't give in to what your body wants. In the night, I kept standing up because I forgot to take some medication. And the Holy Spirit said, go and take milk. I went to the fridge and took milk. And that was how I slept last night. Apostle Paul continued, said, otherwise I fear that after enlisting others for the race, I myself might be declared unfit and ordered to stand aside. Hmm. I just read from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26 to 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26 to 27. The last thing I read was, otherwise I fear Paul is saying that he desires to punish himself. He desires to discipline himself because he has a fear that after enlisting others to follow and go to heaven, he might be declared unfit. You know what Paul said here, somebody told it to me in 1980, I think, 91. I witnessed in a bus. And when the bus got to the station, every person in the bus came down. And while I was walking, a sister walked up to me and said, Brother, thank you for that message. But I pray. This is her prayer. Say, Brother, I pray that after putting others in the bus, you find a bus to go to heaven. That prayer has followed me from since that day. And I can only find a bus after packing people to bus to heaven. I can only find a bus to go to heaven if I discipline myself. If I preach the full gospel. Hallelujah. Moses wanted to know the name of who is sending him. If the fathers asked and God says, tell them I am is my name. You know, to follow God, we don't need much details. Just believe. He wanted to know the name. And he gave him the name. That name must have thrown him into more confusion. I am. Go and tell them I am. And to, to make things easier for him, tell him the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the one that is sending you. We are serving a wonderful God. According to 1 Timothy 3.16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto, angel, uh, unto Gentiles, believed in the world, received into glory. Great is the mystery of God without controversy. I am, I am is my name. I am. When Moses was afraid to go to Pharaoh, God assured him that he will be with him. 
In that same way, God will be with you in where you are going in the name of Jesus. Amen. Moses as a human. Remember, God is using Moses. Moses was just a murderer. But because Moses went to the wilderness and spent 40 years, God prepared him and was ready to use him. And when he was afraid, perhaps he remembered in that Pharaoh you are sending me back to, in that country you are sending me back to, I was a murderer. And God said, he will be with you. Do not allow any sin to pull you back. Jesus has finished the work on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. God understands our weakness. For that reason, Jesus says, come unto me, come unto me, come unto me. Why is he saying, come unto me? You cannot make it alone. Come unto me. Come, come, come unto me. Who? All you that labor. Thank you. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. He says, when you come, there is something you will do. Thank you, I hope. And learn of him. Most important. Learn of him. If you come to church, you don't learn about Jesus. You are empty handed. Take the yoke. Okay. But learn. Learn. Come to church. Make yourself available in Bible studies. Learn of him. Come. Because you cannot survive alone. But well, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Again, knowing our weakness, the Holy Spirit himself makes intersection. The Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groans which cannot be altered. God knows we are weak. When I was fasting, I was at a point feeling somehow only three day dry, uh, uh, continuous fast. And I was asked to go and take milk. The Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groans which cannot be uttered. Why is the Holy Spirit in position to make those prayers? He searches the heart and knows what the mind of the spirit is. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I may be praying, but I'm not praying according to the will of God. And basically he notices that he is really praying, but he's praying out of target. He takes over and pray according to the will of God. At times when you speak in tongue, you don't understand what you are saying. But the Holy Spirit uses it to pray according to the will of God. God answers prayer. Trust in him. Do not be afraid. The way he remembered the children of Israel after 400 years, he will remember you. Oh, dear